Hi everyone, I'm Arsene Vanderbilt. I'm a product specialist at Menace. Uh, I've been working at Menace for a little over five years now in various roles. Um, and as a technical guy, um, but not as a programmer, I was really interested to see um, well, what you can do with the Manus core software. So I've had a couple of colleagues who uh, thought about or experimented with machine learning. And one of the things I thought would be very interesting to do is uh, see if I could set up a uh, machine learning system uh, myself by using a, a couple of our plugins as well as uh, some uh, third-party software. So this video will be uh, showing uh, what I made as a short prototype and explaining how I did it and how you could yourself set up such a system or like in general explain um, how you can use data that, uh, that the gloves produce. So first off, as you can see, um, this is the dashboard. Um, uh, and inside of the dashboard, you have the 3D view and you also have the data view. And this data view uh, shows you the different kinds of like uh, finger data um, that the gloves provide. Um, you can use this data raw. So these are, for example, zero to one values for different kinds of things. So for bending of your fingers, bending of different segments, uh, spreading, um, or you could use the process data. So in this case, uh, projected on a digital hand. Now. What I made is a simple uh, Unity application using uh, our Unity plugin that consumes this same kind of data. So this zero to one value data that you see in the dashboard is the same data um, that you see in this small application. And it's just using the finger bent information from my left claw. Uh, and what this application is doing, it is uh, taking this data and it is making it available over OSC. And OSC is a very simple protocol. Originally, or like the meaning of OSC is open sound control. Um, and it's a very simple protocol for uh, making data available between applications. And inside of Unity, there is no official support. Um, but I found someone who uh, made a plugin for it uh, that was pretty easy to implement. And I um, extended. Um, the, the the plugin itself because originally it only supported four or five different values uh, that you could send and um, well as you can see for a hand you have uh, definitely more than four or five values so i extended it uh, so it would support i think it was um well we can count them one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen sixteen different um uh numbers different values um, and then I have a application um, you can use to train uh, poses, um, or I should say, I should probably explain differently. You have an application and you can input OSC data into it and you can um, calibrate different kinds of values um, that it will then output. So using all of this data, uh, I made a list of different kinds of, of um, outputs, so to say. So for example, I have a one, which is an American or a British one. The European European one would be like this, like one, two, three, whereas it's one, two, three, depending on where you live. Um, but anyway, I set it up as one, and I did one a couple of times. I set this value to one, and then I would um, uh, record it after doing all of that for all these different poses. So it's one, two, uh, three, and then three, four, five. And this is a pistol or a European, Western European two, or fist, uh, relax, it's just relaxed hand state. The Kung Fu chop is uh, the fingers together, ready to attack someone. Um, Thumbs up or Western European one, uh, rock and roll, an OK pinch or, well, an OK sign or a, a round uh, index uh, thumb pinch, a small cylindrical grip and a large cylindrical grip, uh, Italian pinch, which is more like a joke, it's a, <laughs> it's a five finger pinch, uh, a claw, so a claw, um, the Hawaiian hang loose, 
Shaka sign. Uh, well, yeah, if you want to insult someone, middle finger. And a pinch where you hold your fingers a little bit open as if you are holding a physical prop. All of these poses I uh, recorded one by one. I let it train. Uh, and then it will calculate the likeliness uh, with certain input data. Um, and then I visualize that in Unreal. So inside of Unreal, um, I set up a OSC server. Um, so Unreal, more or less by default, has the ability to receive OSC data. Uh, you can create an OSC server, which can uh, receive data. This is the port that uh, this application outputs to. Uh, and then I set this as a, um, well, a destination as a ser uh, the, for the server. So this happens once and then on every uh, tick or on every time the uh, animation blueprint updates, it uses this information. Um, if it is valid, it will uh, spawn a different event. And this event is, if there is a OSC message received, so the what OSC does, it, it sends a bunch of messages with data inside of it. Um, and then I do something for the data that I get. Um, as you can see, it's pretty messy. It's really a prototype. It's not meant to be nice or, <laughs> or be good. Let me resize this a little bit so you can see a little bit more. Um, this is like a switch case um, with all the different kinds of poses uh, that I showed you here. And um, for each of those, um, values that you get in this um, message array or message, uh, there's another word for it, uh, combined message, it will um, uh, define a specific um, value. So for example, the one or the two or the et cetera, all of those are set uh, into a specific value that I can then use in the animation graph. And um, I also played around with some other options like uh, comparing um, uh, I'll explain this later. Um, so all of these values are set, and then I had a small script to spawn, no, not spawn, spam um, console messages whenever I did a one, for example, or two during testing. Then in the animation graph, um, what it does essentially is it um, takes this value, so these um, all of those values that you saw here, uh, variables, um, it uses that, uh, that and then it has a uh, animation that it blends with. So all of these are blend nodes and they're the same amount as uh, you saw poses in the machine learning application um, and it blends between them. So if it thinks that the one pose is very likely, then it will blend this animation on top of the rest and it will go through it, blah, blah, blah. All of them will be blended. The, the, the thing that this prototype doesn't contain is um, so to say any smartness, like for example, if I'm doing a fist and that fist, for example, is very much like a thumbs up, it will say fist is, for example, 99% uh, and thumbs up is, for example, 70%. As an example, it will blend like half or in between. And what I tried to set up with these nodes, um, which was just an experiment, um, and with these nodes is if one of those values is very high to disregard uh, all of the other values. So you can have, for example, a distinct like thumbs up um, and it doesn't blend between the thumbs up and the fist. Um, but that's probably for the next prototype. I didn't manage to finish or set it up um, right now. Um, and um, here in this um, animation graph, you see all of these different animations. And what I did beforehand is um, in 3ds Max, I set up a, a couple of poses, um, so 20 different poses um, that it will cycle through. So this is a like a reference pose. Next one is pointing. Second one is a two. Uh, then a, well, let me see three. Uh, a uh, American British three, a four, a five a pistol or a European, Western European two, fist, uh, claw, uh, the Kung Fu chop, uh, thumbs up or European one, rock on, uh, pinch, uh, small cylindrical grip, larger cylindrical grip, 
Italian pinch, uh, a claw, uh, the shaka, uh, a middle finger, and a uh, pinch with the fingers not touching, so holding something. Um, and these poses in this model I uh, exported into uh, Unreal, and uh, I set up the animations so I can blend between them. Uh, and next up, we will see this data inside of the uh, uh, small application I made to send this data. Then in this application, I will uh, turn it on. And as you can see, like when I am doing, let me make this a little bit, uh, let me see, make this a little bit better. When I do a one, you can see that this uh, value becomes very high. It's very confident I'm doing a one and a two and a three and a this three and a four and a five, a pistol, so it's blending a little bit between these. Um, a fist, a relaxed pose, doesn't always work as well. The Kung Fu chop is pretty confident in that. Um, this is the thumbs up, it's very confident. The rock and roll, um, the okay. A uh, small cylindrical grip is a little bit difficult because I had a prop that I used for that. I don't have that laying around. And the larger one, I also don't have that laying around, so these won't work so well. Uh, the Italian pinch, so a five finger pinch. The claw uh, works pretty well. The shaka works pretty good. Uh, middle finger, as you can see, also pretty confident. And then the pinch that is open is also working all right. Um, Next up, so this is running in the background. This is running in the background. Uh, I will set up this scene. And let me see. So inside of this uh, Unreal application, it is now visualizing, uh, is now visualizing all these values. So if I do a one, if I do a two, if I do a three, like as I mentioned before, sometimes it blends between two different poses. That's why it doesn't look perfect right now. The the other three, it's also blending between this and the fist. It's not perfect, uh, but as you can see, um, it's working pretty well. And th the main reason that it doesn't look well is not because the data is bad. It's just I didn't prioritize which pose um, is more important. Uh, the shaka. Let me see if I can get a different angle so you can see it a little bit better. Pinching, uh, pinch that is open, a claw. Uh, I did a fist, a thumbs up. Um, are there any other ones? The middle finger also works pretty decently. Um, let's see, are there any other poses that I forgot to do? Ah, the Kung Fu chop. Mm. The Italian pinch is also working pretty decently. Um, yeah, so one, two, three, the other three. As you can see, this is blending between, uh, well, now it's working. Um, a four, as you can see, the four and the relaxed are very similar. Um, that's why it's not working as well. Um, a claw, let me see. I think that's most of them, though. Uh, the shaka. Middle finger, pinch open, pinch closed, um, and a thumbs up. Uh, maybe pistol. Um, the, the main thing to show is that with the cloth data that you get, it's, um, let me find the application. It is um, like very simple to use this kind of data. You have zero to one values for each individual joint, and you can just use, um, you can just use uh, some kind of application that like can process this data. It's very useful. Um, you don't only have to use the um, animation data that you get from uh, like get from the skeleton. You can also um, reapply it if you have a workflow or if you have a pipeline where you want to do something entirely different. You don't have to rely on this uh, visualization. If you have a rig in Maya or if you have a rig somewhere else and you are just using zero to one values to control your rig if you can if you can make a small plugin to send this glove data over osc or through another protocol with the sdk uh, into your 3d application you can just use it to control your rig in your editor in real time um that's it
Thanks for watching, and um, I hope you enjoyed it. Bye-bye.